Hello everyone, my name is Brandon Jewell with the Career Technical Education Foundation and I am here with Layla Hashemi, who is an R&D Engineering Manager at Keysight Technologies, uh, whose headquarters is here in Santa Rosa. Welcome Layla, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. So let's just kick into uh, the first thing that we want to know is what is it that an R&D Engineering Manager does at Keysight? So um, if you're wondering, R&D is research and development. And in my case, I lead a team of 13 engineers who together develop uh, microcircuits for new product introductions. This um, includes network analyzers or oscilloscopes, guess um, instruments that you might have worked with in your physics or electronics lab, or um, transceiver that can test cell phone uh, towers or a project we're recently working on is a radar target simulator that is used for testing autonomous vehicles. So what is it that drew you to a career like this, like engineering? Uh-huh, so um, I, growing up, I always was, I was interested and actually pretty good at physics and math, and I knew that I wanted to do engineering. So um, I did material science um, engineering for my bachelor's degree, and um, I continued on the same path for my master's degree. Um, then I worked for a few years as a, well, not a few years, but a few um, months as a researcher in the university before I moved to Santa Rosa and Keysight Technologies um, as a manufacturing engineer which eventually having led some projects and um, worked with cross-functional departments and um, actually enjoying the people side of the work, I decided to explore engineering management. So Keysight is a really big company here in our local area. Talk a little bit more about Keysight and their culture. Well, what I um, really like about the Keysight culture, and actually now is a good time to talk about it because um, a lot of us are working from home um, for the past several weeks, and um, we had similar scenarios in the past couple of years with some unusual situations, and Keysight has been very accommodating of its employees. The culture is very um, open, very honest. Um, we get a lot of communication um, through our CEO and um, out to all the teams, so everybody feels like they're well-connected, and the company takes care of their employees. In addition to the fact that, well, we build very cool products and we are the leader in our technology. So all of that makes it uh, really interesting in terms of working for Keysight and being part of the culture. So on top of what you were just mentioning, what is it that you like most about the career that you have there? So um, one of the things that I've really enjoyed over the years was being having access to a lot of cool technology, um, like really high-end manufacturing equipment. So at one point, I was um, the process engineer working on a million-dollar laser micro-machining tool, which was r really fun working with and challenging at the same time. And then, of course, I'm part of a team that we develop uh, next-generation electronics products. Who doesn't want to be part of that? And uh, it's the, the people side too. So I, I, over the years, really built strong relationships with um, different departments, teams that I work with, and my immediate team as well, which is something that I really cherish. You know, for the students that are watching this and they're starting to explore their own skills and interests um, and how that connects to careers, would you go over some of the skills and some of the training that's needed to be successful as an engineer? So as an engineer, um, one would definitely need a bachelor's degree in science or engineering. Sometimes um, there are folks who advance to the engineering level having um, maybe not gone through a technical education like that, but through a lot of um, hands-on experience as a technician and then they get promoted into an engineering role. And in most cases, though, it's engineering um, school or science, and a lot of times to graduate degrees like master's or PhD degrees are also very common in the industry. And what about the softer skills, though, like, um, you know, those just general personal skills that one would need in order to be successful? Yeah, I always tell students, um, uh, for those of us in engineering who identify as introverts, maybe, um, uh, maybe a lot of us aren't really introverts when it comes to real life. But I think the, the general perception is that engineers 
are good with, with numbers and they've solved problems on paper or on computers and they don't necessarily have to interact with other human beings all that much. But in the real world, uh, like I mentioned earlier, I worked with many, many people, hundreds of people across Keysight. And I have to be good at working with people or become good at it. So those soft skills you will need to develop through constant interaction with your partners, your media team members, or other departments, customers, suppliers that you work with. How many, do you know how many people work at Keysight? So in the Santa Rosa headquarters, it's something between 1,500 to 2,000, um, varies at times, and all across Keysight worldwide, it's around 13,600 employees. Wow, that's incredible. One of the larger employers that we have in this area, I believe. So as my final question, um, I just wanna get some advice from you for the students that are watching this. You know, as I mentioned, they're right now, they're exploring. Um, many of them are maybe juniors or seniors in high school, and they've got to figure out what to do once they graduate high school. Um, do they go on to a, get a two-year certificate or a four-year degree or a master's? And what does that look like as far as the career that they want to go into? So for those that maybe you're thinking that they want to go into some sort of engineering, um, what is some piece of advice that you have as somebody who's gone through that before? Mm -hmm. So I would say definitely explore as many different engineering job possibilities. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of talking to people you know or getting referrals, you may not know someone directly, but you know somebody who knows someone in an engineering field, talk to them. Um, possibly shadow them in their jobs. And e even those jobs that you feel like you know them well enough, like maybe an electrical engineer or mechanical engineer, those are some of the more common ones. Mm -hmm. Still, the jobs in that field can be very different. So as an engineer, you could be a researcher in the academia or work in a national lab. You could write code, you could do design, you could do manufacturing with your hands. Um, there's so many different possibilities. So even if you think you know that type of job, trust me, you still want to talk to as many people in that job as possible because it can be very different. Great. Well, I want to thank you for taking the time to speak to us today and share your experience. It's my pleasure.